Hi everyone. We're going live. It's the Nicole. Oh, it's Nicole Steele, known as the Joyful Stamper. And it's time to stamp. So let's see. Okay. I got a million cords here. A million. Literally a million. Just my light. Okay. So we're live. I'm live. We're going to stamp today. And I love, love, love what we're making. I love it. A double easel card, which is another really easy, fun fold. And I, while making the card, I had a brilliant brainstorm. I think it's brilliant. And I'm going to show you how I didn't waste any of that gorgeous brushed metallic cardstock because it's too pretty to throw out. So if you're joining me live, thank you. If you're watching the replay, thank you. I am so glad that you chose to spend some time stamping with me today because I don't like to stamp alone. So right now, today, August 6, 2020, through Saturday, August 8th, I'm having a BOGO retired stamp sale. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I got to clear out some stuff because I bought a little too much from the holiday catalog. So what I'm doing is, and this is a win-win for you guys, for me, for everybody. So grab that wish list, grab your holiday catalog. You can shop from the annual catalog. You can shop from the clearance rack. And whatever you order in my store, you can choose an equivalent amount of my retired product for free. All you have to do is pay the priority mail flat rate shipping rate for me to get those retired products to you and I will send you a PayPal invoice for that. Now the amount that you will have to spend on my retired product is whatever the amount is that you order before shipping and tax and after you've redeemed any bonus day coupons that you earned. So you could pick up a little bit of stuff. You could pick up a lot about a lot of stuff. It's totally up to you how you want to do this. So that's going on now. It's it's right here on this same Facebook page that you're watching this live on, unless you're watching this on YouTube, in which case you need to go to my um, the Joyful Stamper Facebook page. I created a photo album, and that's where I have pictures of all the products. And the pictures have the pro the price visible along with the product and all you have to do is comment sold underneath it if you want that. Then go to my store shop with Nicole.stampinup.net, place your order and I will see that and when it comes through I will send you an invoice for the shipping of the reti free retired product and then once you pay that I will mail it out to you. So that's it. That is it. Um, if you have any questions let me know. Type them in the comments here. So. I will be very responsive, and if you want a holiday catalog, let me know. I will send you out a catalog package at no charge. I want you to have it in your hands. Let me show you the cover. It's stunning, absolutely stunning. I'm in love with so much here. We're not gonna talk about how many bonus days coupons I got, but let's just say I got the new stamp and cut and emboss machine. The demonstrators were allowed to order that yesterday and I jumped on that. So I'll show you the cards that we're gonna make today. Aren't they lovely? I Fall stamping is so, so inspiring to me. And when I sat down to play with these new products yesterday, it just wasn't any trouble at all. I had no creative block whatsoever. So we're gonna start with this one right here. Whoops. This is what's known as a double easel fun fold card. So you have your traditional card like this, but we're going to put a fun little easel style on the front so that it will stand up like that. Or here's a side view. Now all the measurements and dimensions that I'm going to use in these projects, I typed up in a project sheet and I will post that project sheet in the description to this video and it will be on my blog post for today, August 6, 2020. If you want to go back and you can print it, you can save it on your device, you can pin it if you have a Pinterest board for that kind of stuff. However you want to use it, it's there for your inspiration. And also, yeah, I hope you'll get the supplies in my store in order for me to make this project, right? But it, it's, 
This project's so pretty. How could you not want to? So if you're joining, give a shout out, um, have a comment, question, whatever. Go ahead and leave it. Okay, so we're going to start with Cajun Craze cardstock. Lovely fall color. Four and a quarter by 11 inches. Score down the middle at five and a half. And we want a bone folder is very important for this card because you want nice, crisp folds for this. Okay, now we have a piece of early espresso card stock, and this one is four inches by ten and a quarter inches. And we have to make a couple score lines on that. So I'm going to pull out my scoring board. The Stampin' Up, this is a Martha Stewart one. The Stampin' Up one is known as Simply Scored. And I'm going to use my bone folder, so I'm putting the 10 inch um, length of this. Oh, you know what? This is supposed to be 10 and a quarter. It looks like I might have cut it a little bit short, but it'll be okay. So it's actually supposed to be a hair longer, like an eighth of an inch longer. I have mine at 10 and an eighth. It's supposed to be 10 and a quarter. It'll still work. So we're going to score this at two and three quarters. And we're going to score again at five inches. Okay, on the long side. And now we don't need that anymore. Okay, and now we're gonna fold this. So here's the, the longer portion up there. We're gonna fold up like this. And this is where you really wanna make sure you get this crisp and cre crisp, crisp. That's all I needed to say. And then I'm gonna take this part and I'm gonna fold it down like that. And seriously, that is your double easel fun fold right there. Wasn't that easy? Yeah, and it's going to make a really pretty card. And a unique card. Very unique card. Okay, now I'm going to pull out some Gilded Autumn Designer Series paper. And I have two pieces here. That's the back side. And you can see it's specialty because it's got gold foil on it. So I have this piece which I cut to three and three quarters by five inches and that's going to get glued there and this piece is going to go down here and it is three and three quarters by two and a half inches. So let's add some glue to that and I'm just going to use multi-purpose liquid glue. We're going to put it on right there. That goes on the larger top portion. So my stamp and cut and emboss machine, I cannot believe this. I ordered it yesterday and within two hours Stampin' Up! had shipped it out and UPS, <clears throat> excuse me, is delivering it Saturday. I live in Pennsylvania. Stampin' Up! is in Salt Lake City, Utah. Normally it takes a week for the orders to get to me once they leave Stampin' Up!'s um, facilities. It's only taking three days. Three days, right? Yeah, yesterday was Wednesday. I am so excited. I can't wait to play with it when it gets here on Saturday. I might have to wait a little bit though because we're moving my daughter back into college. Okay, so now this is going to get glued to our card front. So I shouldn't have put that glue away just yet. And I'm only going to glue, put glue on this larger top piece because that's the part that's going to go on the card right here. Give it a little bit of time to adhere. Okay. Now we're going to start decorating this beauty. All right. Now, I used the Ornate Frames dies. This is more gilded autumn designer series paper. Aren't those pumpkins beautiful? They have gold foil on them. But I hadn't used my Ornate Frames dies in a long, long time. They we're coordinated with this Halloween stamp set back in last year's holiday mini catalog and the dies carried over to the annual catalog so I'm pulling them back out because they were the perfect size for this project. I'm going to stamp my sentiment on this one right here and I'll show you the stamps that I'm using. I'm going to use Gather Together. This was also in last year's holiday catalog but it's it returned and I'm, I'm really glad because I had so much fun using this. If you want to see a ton of projects using this set, just go to my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, and you can do a search on Gather Together, and all those projects will come up. Okay, I'm using Cajun Craze ink pad to stamp the greeting right in the center here. 
I love the little early espresso flecks that are on that designer series paper. You could add that yourself with a marker, but it's also nice that they have it done for you if you don't feel particularly confident in doing that technique. Okay, now I'm going to glue this to the top portion of my card here. Just let, and fold that up so that you get a good idea of where this where you want this to sit. Okay. And now we're going to do some stamping and die cutting. So I'm pulling out some mint macaron cardstock. I'm going to have one two. I want two of these leaves. So I went ahead and did one of them and I'm going to stamp the other one. So I'm using mint macaron ink and I'm going to use the largest leaf from that gather together stamp set. And this is just a scrap piece of mint macaron. Mint macaron? I'm not real good with pronunciation. Okay, so I've got that, and now we're gonna die cut that out. So I'm gonna get my cuddle bug. My cuddle bug that is not going anywhere. I'm not getting rid of this. It has served me well for 15 years. But I am very excited to play with the new one. All right, now there are coordinating dies that go with the Gather Together stamp set. They're the Gather Leaves dies. And I believe Stampin' Up! kept the 10% bundle discount pricing in the holiday catalog where you'll find this again. So lining that up, and I'm going to run this through. Okay. All right, we're gonna need that die cutting machine again here. Okay, so now we've got the two leaves and well, now we need some foil leaves. Okay, so I'm using brushed foil cardstock. This is in the Holiday Mini and I don't know if you can see, it's got like this almost slightly scraped or brushed look to it. It comes in bronze, copper, and gold. And here's the thing, I wanted leaves in each of those colors because I couldn't decide which one, which color I wanted. So I was like, well, I'll do one in all three. And I started to die cut the leaves out. And again, I used the gathered leaves die. So it was these three framelits right here that I was using. And I started to die cut it out and the shape that was left was something like this. And I looked at it and I thought, you know what? I don't want to throw that away. This paper's really pretty. And I think I can do something with this. So what I did is I took the stitched shapes dies. I took, a, I think it was the second largest square and then the third largest squares. And I die cut one in gold, one in copper, and one in bronze. So isn't, I love that stitching around it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these leaf dies and I'm going to run them through my die cutting machine and I'm going to die cut these leaves from it. So let's go ahead and do that. Bring the cuddle bug back. Make sure I get this in the camera. All right. Hi, Marianne. Facebook is not real good about showing me if anybody's on here or not. So I never quite know if I'm talking to myself or not until somebody comments. Okay. So we have those on there. And now I'm going to put this top plate on and run it through. Okay. Okay, so now I have those three pieces. I'm going to remove the dies. Alright, so now I have the three leaves in the brushed metallic cardstock that I was looking for. Oops, I accidentally... Well, that didn't work out. That's not what was supposed to happen. <laughs> I accidentally cut through that. Okay. Well, in real life, you wouldn't do that. But now we have three elements that we can use on a whole other card. And we've got that stitch detail going around it, too. So, super excited when I discovered that. Okay, we're going to set these aside because that's the second card I'm going to do. But I promise you, you totally don't need to cut through it. It fits on there because I made a, card, a sample card using that. Um, okay, so let's put the rest of the card together. Oh, it's 
stamping mistakes on live TV, right? No way around it. Okay. Uh oh, I hear my dog racing around. She, I have the door closed. She might be wanting to be let down here shortly. Okay. We're going to glue this mint macaron leaf on. And it's okay if stuff pops up the edge, pops up over the edge of this. What you don't want, though, is for it to go below that bottom part there, because that's the part that's going to sit on a table or a mantle wherever somebody else is displaying it. Okay, so I have those overlapped like that. And now we are going to glue our brushed metallic cardstock leaves. Okay, just like that. Hi, Sharon. How are you doing? playing with some metallic paper today. Now I found whenever I was working with this metallic cardstock, this liquid glue, I didn't, it didn't really hold too well. Um, it sort of slid around. I think it's because the foil itself is not porous, so it doesn't absorb the glue and therefore it doesn't stick. So when trying to adhere this foil paper, I would recommend using either stamp and seal plus or mini glue dots. I'm gonna go ahead with the mini glue dots because I actually don't have stamp and seal plus. Plus it's easy to just press them on there and pull them off. And I think I'm gonna put two on these. And I'll put that one there. Oh, thanks Sharon. Did you ever find like when you're working with paper or a stamp set that you just really, really love it's just so easy to create something. You don't really have to struggle with it. It just happens. You get in that zone and the ideas just start coming and everything gels. That happens, that used to happen when I went on long runs too. I used to be a long distance runner for about 30 years and then I had to quit a couple years ago because of injuries, which I would never got injured at all. And then after 30 years of running, I finally did. So I had to stop doing the long distance running. When I say long distance, I mean like I would run like 14, 15 miles. And I would just get into the zone and it felt like effortless. Totally effortless. I know that sounds crazy when you're talking about 14, 15 miles. But it really did feel that way. So again, this is Gilded Autumn Designer Series Paper. I used or the Ornate Frames dies to cut that out. And then this is the Wheat Sheaf from Gather Together and I stamped it in Cajun Craze ink on very vanilla cardstock and then I used paper snips to cut it out. This I'm going to attach with Stampin' Dimensionals because I want it to lift up over all those layers. Because that, that is a lot of layers there. Which I wanted. I love putting layers on my cards. And I'm just using the edge of my dimensional sheet. I've used up everything in the middle, so now it's time to snip the ends. Okay, I don't want to cover up too many of those leaves, so I'm going to put it a little bit down there. This I am going to use liquid glue. You could use glue dots if you wanted to. Okay, put it right there like that because we need space over there for this ribbon, I had this on my favorites list on my blog post a couple days ago. This is the 3 8 inch embroidered ribbon in the holiday catalog and it is so incredibly soft. I couldn't wait to pull it out to play with it. Whoop. And I'm going to tie it in a bow. And I'm going to try not to fuss with it too much because that's really boring to watch. Okay, and then I'm gonna trim it. You don't wanna make a huge bow because you'll end up covering those leaves and you don't want to. And I'll put that on with a glue dot. I find glue dots work the best for, for ribbon. So if you're ever, I know Stampin' Up! carries a variety of adhesives and if you're wondering which adhesive to use with what material, I actually put an adhesive chart, reference chart, on my blog. Um, it was several weeks ago. You can search my blog for it and it should come up, but I designed it so you can print it, save it, download it, whatever you need to do. And it'll tell you which adhesive to use with which materials. So you don't have to guess anymore. 
Now I'm using some gilded gems and I'm going to put one right there. And I'm going to use one of the middle sized ones. There we go. Okay, and now the inside. Because this is darker cardstock, I figured it would be hard to read what some you know what you had written to somebody. So I took a piece of very vanilla cardstock and I die cut it with or the ornate layers die, the largest one in that set. And I don't want to glue it in there just like that. I want to stamp some stuff on it. So we're gonna get back out mint macaron and we're gonna get Cajun Craze and we're gonna get early espresso. If those three colors don't say fall, I don't know what does. Now a Cajun craze, if you're wondering why, <laughs> I have a piece of masking tape on here. It's because this actually used to be a real rust ink pad long, long ago. And when um, I stamped up, didn't sell the reinker for it anymore, I just went ahead and bought the Cajun craze reinker and I just started inking it up with that one. So now it's a Cajun craze ink pad. I'm going to stamp this wheat sheep down at the bottom. Yeah, see, I've said before, I'm a frugal stamper. Now you know just how frugal I can be. Mint macaron, I'm going to put some of these little splatters around that. I love Cajun Craze and Mint macaron together. I mean, who? I would never have thought of that. But that is really nice looking together. Now, early espresso. I need to get out my greeting because I forgot to put it on my block. Um, where is it? There it is. It's hiding under a pumpkin. Okay. It says, may this season bring you smiles and love that last all year. So I thought this would be a great fall birthday card. Just because a card doesn't say happy birthday doesn't mean you can't send it for that occasion, right? Okay, now I'm going to use early espresso, which is a really deep, dark chocolate brown. And I'm going to stamp that right there. Okay. And now we're going to glue it to the inside of this card. Yeah, you know, the only time of the year, really, that I use Cajun Craze is fall. I can't seem to make it work for any other season. But I love the color, nevertheless. I can't wait to start making Halloween projects. I feel like it's too early yet though. I don't wanna rush it. Okay, so there's, whoops, my notes. There's, oh, we forgot some gilded gems there too. Can't leave that looking plain. I'm gonna use the largest gilded gems for this one. Okay, now the card is done. That is such a simple fold. Double easel fold is what it's called. And your card will sit up like this. Impressive, but not very difficult. Even for a beginner stamper, right? And when you use these products, it makes the card look wow. I can't wait to mail this to somebody. All right, now we're going to make the second card that uses that cutout negative space from those brushed metallic leaves. So let's move on. Okay, so this is the finished card right there. And you can see I die cut those leaves and put them on this card and then I save those to use on this one. And remember I used the stitched shapes dies to cut those squares. So let me pull out my little packet here. Oh, I have to show you this too. So my cousin, she had twin boys on Sunday and I wanted to send her a congratulations card so I made her a double easel card for them. Congratulations. And I know she likes the color gray. I think that's what the boys' rooms are going to be. And so I did that. And I, I used some retired hearts dies to die cut the paper. And that's from Seriously the Best. I don't know if you guys have been with Stamp Up long enough to remember this. This, um, was it, chocolate chip felt ribbon. It was in a winter mini catalog. And it has some white stitching on it. Oh, I still have a full spool of that. And that's actually one of the things that I'm going to be really sad when it runs out. Usually I'm not a hoarder with my products, but I loved, loved, loved that ribbon. All right, let's pull my little card kit out here. And this card has so few pieces. So few pieces. It's crazy. So this is thick, very vanilla cardstock. Anytime you're going to use Whisper White or Very Vanilla as your card base, you want to go with the thick 
uh, versions of those colors. That way it will still stand up without buckling under all the layers you're gonna put on there. Now we're not putting a ton of layers on this particular card. This is so simple and elegant. This is also Gilded Autumn Designer Series paper. Look at that back side. I ate at the Cheesecake Factory once and they gave me a bag that had these colors. I love that. So we're gonna glue this to the front of the card. Now this mat is a little bit larger than normal. It's five and three eighths of an inch by four and an eighth of an inch. I did not want a really large, very vanilla border. Hi, Linda. I forgot to look at my comments. Okay. Get that on again. I did not want a very large vanilla border there, so that's why I went with the larger larger measurements. I, I can mail it to you. <laughs> Yeah, I made enough copies of them because I I really I didn't stop at one. I had too much fun using all the paper. All right, now we're gonna bring those squares in. Okay, so now remember my oops, I cut too close to that edge. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on anyways because I think once it's glued on here, it's not going to be all that noticeable. So I'm just gonna go ahead with it. Now I'm putting dimensionals on the back of these because I really want them to stand up. You're a ribbon hoarder. You know what? I suspect a lot of people, a lot of crafters, hoard supplies. I go on Split Coast Stampers, and um, it's a common topic of discussion there. I used to do that, and then I just thought, you know what? What am I doing? Because you know what? I'm going to run out of space, and I won't be able to get more pretty things, so I better use it. Let's get a new sheet of dimensionals rather than cut these ones up. And quite frankly, something pretty is always going to come along down the pike that I'm going to want. So, and then I'll end up forgetting about the other stuff. And so it's, I just use it. It's so satisfying too when you use up a spool of ribbon and you toss it. <laughs> is that weird? Last fall, I had little pieces of the Gather Together suite left. Wooden embellishments, some ribbon, some paper, that kind of thing. And I sat them on my desk and I was like, all right, I'm going to make projects using up all the rest of this. I want to use everything up. And I did it. I think I made five cards and I made a banner and I made some home decor piece too, but I used up all the remnants of it. I posted about it actually. I think it was on Instagram I did that. But it was so fun like I just got in the creative zone doing that okay so I'm gonna put this one up here and I'm not gonna press down too hard because I might want to reposition these okay and here's my damaged one but we're gonna use it anyways all right and then I have my last one here just like that okay whoop and the reason you don't want to put them down too hard is because Pulling these particular pieces back up might actually cause them to tear because you have the inner part cut out. So that outer part is a little bit weaker in terms of its strength. Okay. There we go. A little fuzz there. Okay. We got the layout. Now I'm taking a scrap piece of that Gilded Autumn Designer Series paper. And if you remember, this is what I die cut for the first card. I put the sentiment on it and made a label with it. Well, I had a scrap piece. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the season of thanks greeting from this gather together set and I'm going to ink up just the thanks in early espresso. Now I have a little ink cube and a stampin' spot that makes it easy to do just that. If you have an early espresso marker, stamp and write marker, you could um, just color, use the marker to color just the word thanks on here. And it is possible to use a full size ink pad to do the same thing too. I have done it before, but what I would do if you were using a full size ink pad is I would do my best to ink up just the word thanks. And then I would take my finger or a baby wipe and wipe off the rest of the stamp just to make sure you've got everything off. But here's the thing, we're gonna trim around this anyways. So, I'm gonna stamp the word thanks right there and I wanna leave myself enough room on the left and the right because I'm gonna add some more of those gilded gems to it. Okay, 
Okay, so I used just the word thanks there with some selective inking, and now I'm going to trim it down. I can see my ink is still a little shiny, so it's not totally dry. And again, I don't want to trim too close to the edge. I need some room for some embellishment. And that is going to go right there. Okay, I'm going to try and straighten this out just a hair more with my scissors. I'm trying to see which part, this part. This is the part that needs straightened. Okay, that'll work. And we're going to put some mini dimensionals on the back of that. I'm going to use three for this one because I don't want it to sag in the middle. Okay. Ah. I had to cut all my nails super short and now it's hard to pick off these little liner papers. I can't seem to get that last one. That's going to go right underneath that leaf there. Okay. Grab some more gilded gems. And I'm going to use the two or the smallest size for these because that greeting is kind of small. And I think that's all I did to this card. It is. All right, there's its mate. Very simple. Here's the double easel fold. So I, I love being able to use the negative space of a die cut. So there's so many times, you can do this with labels, die cut a label and you've got that nice negative frame that you can use for something. You could put a greeting in the middle of it to highlight it. So next time you die cut something, take a look at that piece of paper, that negative space it's called, before you throw it out and think, you know, try to think for a couple minutes about is there something else I could do with this rather than just pitch it. So I could, I think this turned out pretty good. Of course the paper makes it look, you know, it's the paper is what does it too. So, all right guys, um, that is what I have for you today. I hope you like it. Remember I've got a project sheet of the measurements for these so that you can recreate it. And also don't forget that my BOGO sale is going on too right now, right here on right here on my Facebook page. So whatever you order before shipping and tax and after you redeem bonus day coupons, you can pick from my retired product stash um, for free. You just need to pay the flat rate shipping to get it to you. And I have an album created, a photo album created here on my page and you can browse through it and see what I've got it's actually not everything I have, but I figured nobody wanted to scroll through about 500 posts, right? So I put a good selection up there. So, all right, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next. Actually, when I get my stamp and cut and emboss machine, I think I'm going to go live on Sunday night. Just give me a chance to play with it and we can see what it's like. So, all right, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for joining me. Bye.